Thank you, Ganyi, everyone. This is Professor Amin Ra uh, with the Conscious Corner and co-hosts. Uh, hopefully we'll uh, chime in as uh, Brother Joe Hembrick, uh, historian. We want to again thank Brother Rashi Key of uh, Moscone for providing us this platform to present actual facts about Blacks. And we're going to be discussing Islamic phobia tonight. Our guest uh, was unable to attend. Uh, Brother Khalid Ra, my brother, who was a member of the Nation of Islam uh, for years, and he rose to the level of ca captain in security. And uh, he even uh, had a post in Arizona. He moved his family to Arizona for a little while and came back. But for, uh, he, he, he couldn't, he couldn't uh, be a presenter this evening. So I'm going to just discuss some issues with uh, 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 Islamic phobia. Uh, uh, brother uh, uh, Joe Hembrick, as I said, a historian, uh, the co-host, he just um, uh, tapped in and uh, he'll be also sharing his history uh, with Islam and, and the challenges that uh, we face uh, in, in understanding uh, the uh, conflicts that America have with uh, Muslims in America and the global dynamic. Uh, of expression of of, of uh, war against uh, Muslims uh, uh, going back years uh, with regards to that discussion. So uh, we're going to get get started. And again, we want to welcome those of you that have chimed in, and hopefully that this information will help you. First of all, let me say that from a Kawaita perspective, which is the philosophy I, I practice, all people are created are divinely chosen to bring good into the world. And um, it'd be, it's not about race, uh, religion, or anything. They're people first. Uh, then they start doing things. It's just like uh, some people say, I'm a basketball player. No, you're a human being that plays basketball. Uh, well, I'm a Muslim. No, you're a human being that believe in Islam. Uh, you're a human being that believe in Christianity. If it helps you bring good into the world, fine. But the most important thing is to have a high regard and respect for life and uh, the flourishing of life and that people should be able to speak and live their own special truth that makes them a uh, contributor to the best of what it means to be human and what the best it means to be uh, a person that shares sacrifice and is committed to the development and freedom of all humanity. Islamic phobia is a unique term. First, you know, Islam is the religion of Muslims. And there's a history to that, which we can get into. But uh, the most important thing is that you, you know, uh, most people today know what a Muslim is and know what Islam is based upon the fact that there's so many of them, I mean, you know, when, when it comes down to the uh, population and, and the uh, growth, because when you, when you start looking at uh, 1.9 billion Muslims in the world, and uh, they represent close to 24.17% of the world population. And they're in almost uh, all over uh, different continents. And, uh, and, you know, when you think of what Muslim mean, it mean to submit to the will of God. Uh, Islam means to submit to the will of God that was revealed to Prophet Muhammad through revelations. And, as, uh, the, and I'm not talking about um, Elijah Muhammad, I'm talking about Muhammad of, um, well, Mecca uh, of 1500 years ago. They can become Prophet Muhammad, and uh, that he's the one that is credited with uh, initiating Islam uh, from that standpoint. And then the word Muslim means one who has submitted to the will of God, and uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, the third. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's the, really the uh, uh, the second largest religion in the world, next to Christianity. Sometimes, uh, but in America, it's the third largest next to 
Christianity, then Judaism, and then Islam, because it's just a small fraction that represent Islam in uh, America. But anyway, they are uh, they have five pillars, which we will discuss later, uh, with regards that constitute being a Muslim. But at the same time, it's just so uh, that you have to differentiate between what they call Al Islam, which generally consists of uh, the uh, Sunni and the Shiites. Um, uh, 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 and uh, and then at the same time, uh, they uh, they just make up just a large population of of, of of believers and practices of that religion in the world, and uh, they um, are very committed to uh, um, uh, that their uh, what they call submission to the law. They practice what they call Shia law, which is a strict law that was laid down that is the is governs their lives and it sets up the judicial system of punishment which is very harsh punishment but anyway that the whole concept of islam is to submit to the will of god and that they are part of the three major western religions meaning white religions according to dr yusuf bin yakana you know and those three re, uh, major religions are Christianity, uh, Judaism, and Islam. Now they say Islam is the youngest because they, they look at Prophet Muhammad as the last messenger of Allah, Allah meaning God, uh, um, and, they, and, and that he uh, sent uh, Prophet Muhammad because the people didn't listen to Abraham and didn't uh, listen to the Jesus. Uh, and so therefore they, they needed a stricter religion. And that's why they uh, look at uh, Islam as the third. They believe in all the prophets, but they don't believe Jesus was God's son, but they believe he was a wise man that helped um, people and, and, and you know, they don't believe he healed people and things this nature. They don't believe it took seven days for God to create the world. God to them just said, let it be, and it was. And uh, that's, the, that's their faith. They do believe in life after death. They do respect other religions, uh, the, the, the three major religions, uh, Christianity and Judaism, many of the prophets. But at the same time, they have their own uh, book called the Quran. And the Quran is their holy scriptures, and it's written in Arabic. And, uh, and uh, one of the things that uh, they try to encourage most Muslims is to learn Arabic. Even though it's been translated to English, they still wanted you as a Muslim to, um, to learn Arabic. And uh, this, is a, this is a very deep religion. But the problem is with regards to phobia, which meaning a uh, irrational um, hatred or fear of a, of a, of a something or a group. And uh, so we look at America and its history. Uh, now you got to make a delineation between being at war and fighting religious wars, uh, not necessarily as one of a phobia, but just of conflict uh, with regards to the imposition of their religions on other people are territorial. Most wars are fought about land, and then there's also wars that are fought about politics. Theocracies are, are, are countries that are, 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 are governed by their religion. And, and you have democracies, you have uh, uh, stocracies, and you have uh, you know uh, dictatorships, and there are different forms of government. But uh, Theocracy is a, what you call a, a land that is governed by. You have a lot of countries that are Islamic theocracies, and they try to run them themselves about that. But anyway, getting back to the conflict and the phobia, like I said, and the irrational. Some people and some historians are consider it is a contrived fear and hatred uh, by Europeans and by um, um, uh, some Oriental uh, uh, 
uh, uh, powers that uh, have, have used their powers to stroke fear and a sense of hatred toward the uh, Muslims. And that's what uh, the, the, the phobia is supposed to come from. Now, the problem is in the United States, you only have, well, um, as I said, uh, uh, about one or one, one, one and a half, 1.1% of the population are, are Muslims. And even though they're growing, uh, they not, uh, they're not uh, uh, as, uh, 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 as prominent as, as, as people uh, think with regards to uh, uh, the growth in America. Uh, America is a Judeo-Christian uh, 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 a religious uh, society that separate supposed to separate religion from uh, the government and and it's supposed to be a democracy where you know it's supposed to be able to but uh, since its founding uh, oh another thing is they don't see um, the phobia caused by racism because they uh, most uh, Islamic groups don't see themselves as a race. They see themselves as a religion, so they see it more as a, 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 a doctrine uh, phobia. And their practice, they're required to wear clothing, they're required to do their prayers, and those are the, the uh, 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 folk of those five pillars I was talking about. One of the last ones is the Hajj, and that is to go and walk around in the back of the uh, uh, what they call the sacred stone, uh, something that uh, Malcolm went through. And you got to remember, Malcolm X was a Muslim, and um, uh, there were other outstanding uh, individuals. But right now, this sister named Ilhan um, Omar is a congressional woman out of Minnesota, and then there's uh, <coughs> another sister named Talibi. Uh, she's uh, out of Detroit. They're the first two uh, Muslim women elected to the United States Congress that's sitting right now. And uh, they've been getting a lot of threats on their lives. And they blame it on uh, the white right wing that has been stroking Islamic, uh, you know, uh, fears because you know, in this country, there has been a, a, a long a, 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 a history of, a, of, of attacks in America by Muslim groups. Uh, the most famous one, of course, is 9-11. But you had a, a Muslim shoot up some people in San Bernardino. You had some Muslims that uh, bombed the Boston uh, 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 Marathon. And there have been some other high profile attacks by Muslims uh, in, uh, in America, but they don't say why. Why would Muslims attack America? But they use those attacks to make a, a, a sense of hatred toward Muslims. Not, not, we haven't even gotten to the wars that America has fought with Muslim countries, but the most of the conflict is uh, teaching them to hate them in America uh, with regards to the rise of what they would call um, uh, tax on Muslims or Sikhs uh, that they think are Muslims who not, you know, but the point is, is that they uh, 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 see, see, see uh, the various uh, Muslim uh, uh, communities and they have been attacked uh, by uh, individuals and discriminated against and looked at as potential terrorists when they're getting on a plane, a lot of sarcasm. Uh, and I remember in the movie Soul Plane, they, uh, <coughs> they made a humorous uh, uh, stereotyping of uh, the Arabs that got on the plane as if that, uh, you know, they might be potential terrorists. And then at the same time, uh, this country believes that, you know, when uh, Muslims get on planes or get on trains, that they might be carrying bombs. And then at the same time, uh, that, that's, that comes from the 
the various motion pictures that they make about uh, Islamic phobia or um, Islamic uh, attacks on America. And that uh, one of the things that uh, America uh, is, is, is very upset about is that the Muslim countries that have challenged it and have withstand its, uh, its aggression, like the Palestinians, you know, the Palestinians are Muslims and Christians, but they've been fighting Israel, which is uh, nothing but a satellite of America, which they call, they say they're independent, but really uh, America gives them weapons and gives them over billions of dollars a year so that they could operate and so that America could have a military base to, uh, and uh, to look out for America interests with regards to oil and with regards to other precious minerals uh, in that region. Uh, and, and, uh, and then at the same time, America has tried to rebuild nations such as uh, um, Iran in the 70s with uh, Ayatollah Khomeini, where they um, uh, was at, at war that uh, they, uh, America had put in the Shah of Iran, and then the people had a revolution and put in Ayatollah Khomeini, and they held 240 um, um, uh, hostages for years, uh, uh, and they wouldn't let them go. I don't know how, I, I can't remember, I don't know. but they kept America, and it was an embarrassment that America couldn't go over there and rescue them. Now they let the brothers and the women go, and saying that you know you can go, but they kept uh, one brother I think they said who worked for the CIA, and the rest of them was white. And you got to remember that many of the whites that they captured and kept converted to Islam, and when they uh, and this was in and 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 then when they came back. America said they were brainwashed and had to be reprogrammed. So they send them to a hospital to get reprogrammed. Because when they saw them at first, when they were released, uh, they had beards and they were, uh, uh, you know, uh, saying that, you know, they were treated well and that they uh, understand why they was being held and things of this nature. And so then when America heard that, they said, well, something's wrong with them. So they sent them to a hospital in Europe. And then the next time you saw them, they were in their uniforms, clean shaven, and talking a different, uh, a, a patriotic uh, perspective. And they said they had to deprogram them and reprogram them. And then at the same time, you got to remember uh, the, uh, and so anyway, Ayatollah uh, embarrassed them because they kept threatening Ayatollah. And Ayatollah said, do whatever you got to do. I'm getting ready to go to sleep. And, 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 and that was just embarrassing to the United States. Then the next thing was um, that uh, they, uh, the Gaddafi, the assassination of Gaddafi, this is a whole concept. Well, we, even before that, Desert Storm with uh, General Colin Powell and uh, North, they went over there and they uh, uh, was, uh, was gonna fight um, the Iranian, uh, 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 I mean, the Iraqi uh, soldiers uh, that uh, had invaded Kuwait and took their property and took and won Kuwait, which was supposed to be a part of their land, but America had, had, had uh, developed a relationship with Kuwait and defended Kuwait. And they, uh, they lured them out into the desert and made them think they was gonna go head up with them. And then they send bombs around and bomb their homes and bomb their hospitals and bomb the capital of, uh, of, 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 uh, of uh, Iraq at that time. But uh, that broke, you know, you know, they used cluster bombs. They just, it was, it was a technological war where people thought, you know, this, uh, the Iranian, I mean, Iraqis thought they was gonna fight head up to head, what they call, you know, uh, well, anyway, that 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 was a, a, a major uh, situation. Oh. They they tried to rebuild the government in Iraq, and to this day, they haven't been able to do that. So it's embarrassment because they said that they had weapons of mass destruction 
uh, when they went after uh, Saddam Hussein uh, and overthrew his government. And they found out they didn't, they lied. So that was another embarrassment. So what America does is they turn you into the villain. Uh, they turn they turn them into, as, oh, they hate America. They don't hate America. They're responding to America, hatred of them. But anyway, that, and so this is what strokes the phobia. And then the assassination of Gaddafi after he offered to cooperate with him, got rid of his nuclear weapon program and invited him in and started to try to work with him. And uh, they set up an assassination. And this was under... Um, uh, uh, Obama, you know, um, and then there was the, the well, even before that, Anwar Sadat was assassinated by his own soldiers for making a deal with Israel, which was making a deal with America, and uh, which was in conflict with uh, the, the the masses of the people there. They they didn't they didn't agree because of America um, not providing them. Uh, the uh, the resources they need to uh, develop their countries and 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 how they were treating the Palestinians and then there was uh, uh, you know uh, Yasser Arafat who many think that Israel pointed a radiation gun at him and gave him cancer and uh, who was the leader of the Palestinians and the Palestinians are starving to this day. And so it's, it's a conflict with uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, uh, who uh, were the Muslims that were uh, part of the attack on 9-11. And then they said it was uh, Iraq, and uh, they went after the Iraqis instead of Saudi Arabia. And this is all embarrassing. So what they do is they teach the people to hate Muslims and uh, hate um, and be fearful of hate mean don't like them and don't trust them, discriminate against them. And then at the same time, fear is that they may, they are going to um, do something in America, bomb you or, or do something bad to you. So that's the foundation of, of, of that. So we have uh, a, a, an issue with regards to um, uh, recognizing that uh, America was embarrassed in the Afghanistan war, fought it for over 18 years, and could not conquer that land with all this technology, all this weapons, and all this money. And these people fought with just heart and soul and fought them to a standstill. So this is the, the, the concept of uh, Islamic phobia. So uh, I don't know, Brother Joe, do you want to add anything? Are you there, Joe? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, you know, that was a long stretch. Uh, uh, you know, uh, make it short and sweet. You know, America suffers from what's called xenophobia. Anybody that's different from them, they have an issue with. Uh, but getting back to Islam and... Uh, the creation of that and whatnot. Well, you know, at first it was out of those majorest religions, it was Judaism at first. And then Christianity rose up out of that. And with the early Christian church, it was so much corruption going on with it that that's when uh that's when Muhammad and others decide to come up with Islam. Um uh, like you were saying, you know, well, we're, I guess where the first fear or hatred of Muslims comes in kind of goes back to the Crusades when the, when the Arabs are whooping the Europeans <coughs> in, in, in the Crusades. And that, and the hatred from the, actually the Europeans kind of sold their children to the Arabs they were fighting at the end of the Crusades. But anyway, that's about where it began historically, as far back as I can think of. Uh, and so that's where the phobia began then. And uh, like you stated earlier, with all of the conflicts, you know, that have gone on from the United States backing other folks that are anti-Arab, like Israel and, and 
some others. That's where the phobia continues to uh, build. And just like you said, also now with with America being so so anti Arab and Islam, but they're not that way with Saudi Arabia. You know, the president of the Bush family is real tight with the with the with the Saudi Arabian royal family. Uh, that's part of the reason why they didn't really attack them and attacked Iraq. Uh, uh, you know, because Kuwait, who America was backing, I remember when the when the Kuwaiti war was going on, I mean the thing conflict first started, a lot of the a lot of the rich folks in Kuwait came to Beverly Hills and bought up mansions and set out the whole thing while it was going on. But Kuwait was doing what's called slant drilling, drilling, you know, uh, Iraqi oil. And 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 uh, uh, Saddam Hussein, uh, you know, answered that with, you know, with an attack on them. And they were really brutal in their attack. And Kuwait really wasn't situated to deal with the conflict. That's how America, you know, got involved. Uh, but uh, I'm not, I don't, I don't know the Islamic religion, like the ins and outs of it and what they, you know, really believe and practice and all of that. But I do know that when it first came into contact with African people, uh, it was in a, 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 a a conquest mode uh, when they invaded Egypt and then the religion sprang out across North Africa and all of them to me are invaders or descendants of invaders. Uh, Gaddafi and the people he descended from. Uh, I remember when uh, Sadat was voted in as the president of Egypt, it was some instrumental that he said, he said, I'm not, I'm I'm the I'm the only true pharaoh in the last two thousand years because of the Arab occupation of Egypt, and most people think that you know that the Arabs are really Egyptians. Now they're the descendants of invaders that invaded Egypt or Kemet, as as the African community likes to refer to it as. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's amazing how you know, man, the beginning of man is so many millions of years ago, and then religion sprang up and everybody got the thing about, you know, this is from God. Well, God just showed up two million years later to give you some things to live by. Uh, I can go back to, uh, uh, you know, before the, Arab invasion and the Hyskus invasion of Egypt, you know, the practice of Ma'at, where they would say the admonitions of Ma'at, which is the 42 laws attributed to Moses, uh, they would say this five times a day. That's where the Arabs get the praying five times a day. Uh, uh, I know that all three of them are, are are chauvinistic in their nature, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Uh, and I guess Islam may be, may be the most brutal towards females. Uh, but anyway, people can believe what they want to believe and practice what they want to practice. I just study the history of them and try to correct people on the historical aspects of it. You know, because, you know, folks don't believe what they want to believe. So that's the only comment I have to make right now. Maybe some other listeners would like to tune in and comment on what they feel about it. And I got a question. Uh, the, so the speaker didn't, he canceled out tonight? Yeah, the speaker uh, did. Okay. okay. All right. Good doctor, you have any comment? No, not at this moment. Well. What, you got to remember that all gods and religions and philosophies and cultures were created by people. Gods and, uh, uh, and don't create cultures and don't create people. People create gods and they build cultures around them, the theologizing of, of 
one existence or any existence. That's why you have so many different uh, philosophies and so many, yeah. like Hindu and Buddhism is not looked at as a religion, it's looked at as a philosophy. And, but that, that there are billions of people that believe in the, and practice those philosophies, uh, and, uh, which is, you know, deal with nature and giving up your possessions or not caring about possessions if you're Hindu or Buddhist and, and, and those, those things. And then when you go back to the assassination of um, Osama bin Laden on television, instead of apprehending him and bringing him to justice, for, uh, to uh, to uh, to state and 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 that they just killed this man without any any trial, yeah. shot him in front of his kids wow. and everyone in the head. Now some people may say that's what he deserved, and they had they didn't even prove that he was responsible for the. Uh, 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 they said he was, but they never proved he was responsible for the attack on 9/11. Uh, uh, you know, and uh, you know, uh, it's just like uh, right now. You, 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 you can see um, whenever uh, 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 they shoot rockets in Israel, they show it and saying, "Look how the suffering that they are, are, are going through," but they never show what they're doing to the Muslims. Now, I'm I'm not um, here to praise any group or any specific group because. You know, I work with all human beings personally, but at the same time, I, I I work close with the Nation of Islam, which is see you you the, your three major Al Islam is, is Sunni and, and Shia with Shia law, and anyway those, those 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 things are very important. But at the same time, many people in America, the majority of Black people in America are Christians, and they follow the Christian doctrine which uh, is, a, is a unique doctrine that says, don't worry about what you're going through on earth because God going to reward you once you get to heaven. And that's where you're going to find your peace and your love and see all your relatives again that have died and all your all of those things. I mean, people want to believe that, that that's, as Brother Hendrick said, that's okay. Uh, people have been believing in a lot of different things all the time. Look at what QAnon is doing. You know, I mean, I hear Christians believing in QAnon, and they ain't supposed to put up no fake person over Jesus. And, and you know, so, you know, you see the contradictions uh, and the sub, uh, and the and the easy to turn family members in to hating each other and turning people into hating certain things. Certain people don't like certain foods. They get a phobia. Some have a chemical reaction to it. I mean, that's allergic to certain foods. That's different. But when you just say, I just hate the way it, and I'm like that. Certain foods I'm not going to eat. I, I just don't like the name of it. You know, And uh, uh, but at the same time, <laughs> like okra or oatmeal, I don't eat that. You know, I, I never did. But, you know, uh, uh, it, it, I guess if I was in a situation where that's all I had to eat, I would have to. And uh, this is the same thing, but getting back to El, uh, uh, Elhan uh, Omar, this is a congresswoman. And this, 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 this Caucasian lady, who's a congress lady, <coughs> <coughs> made a joke that, hey, she was getting ready to get on, she, they were getting on the same plane. And she said to her white audience, well, I guess it's okay because she didn't have a backpack. And they all bust out and laughing. And so the issue is not individuals that stroke fear and hatred. It's how they can get others to do it with them and justify and justify. It's just like, why do white people don't like black people? What did we ever do to them to deserve lynching? to deserve the Holocaust of enslavement, to deserve the phobia that they have toward black people moving in their neighborhood, sitting at the same counter, using the same bathroom, drinking from the same faucet, riding on the same bus, living in the same neighborhood. I mean, what, if you're a good person as an African-American, I mean, 
uh, the good doctor is a good person. You know, he worked uh, for the state and everything, but there's certain neighborhoods that say, no, we don't want him in that neighborhood. Brother Machinda then educated their kids and worked with all kinds of white. When they, for kids, you, you, you can say, well, the kids, you know, learn this, they, they do. But some of them are sent to camps, Ku Klux Klan camps. I'm not talking about uh, a, a, a child care center. You understand? Look at uh, the uh, mega rallies where thousands of uh, people go to hear Trump and hear Q9 lectures and, and things. And they, they take their kids and they indoctrinate their kids. You see, I remember Dr. Khalid Muhammad said, well, people say they're teaching them uh, to, to hate Blacks when they send them to them camps. He said, no, they're not teaching them to hate Blacks. They already hate Blacks because they were getting the thought before they send them to camps at home and it is translated from the parents. And this is the same thing with this hatred toward Muslim. Why would a, a, a congresswoman uh, do that to their own colleagues. She's in, they're in Congress together. They're supposed to be making laws together, having furious debates on how the law should go or if the law is worth it. But the, you, you argue about the law, you don't argue against the person. And what we have here in this country is a, a disguised hypocrisy of, uh, of, of as, 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 as Joe was saying, uh, xenophobia. And uh, that that this is a, a fear of strangers, or uh, strange things that you don't understand. But this is a dynamic that we, as a people, uh, are trying to promote a moral and an ethical uh, 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 aspect of, uh, of, of 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 life. We're trying to we're trying to uh, uh, prove we're trying to prove to people that life is you know, moral and ethical and that love each other. And then you say, well, you, you see, you, you say, you say, you say, uh, you know, why do some blacks, why are these young black people doing the smash and grab? Why are young black people shooting at each other? Why are young black people doing it? This is, these are behaviors they learn. Uh, in this book called, um, uh, um, uh, Violent Crimes and Criminals by, by uh, a Silverman, Silverman. He tells, he said, this is, this is uh, uh, black people, Latinos, and most people that come to this country uh, uh, in the 16, 15, 1600s, they didn't bring violence with them. This is something they learned here. Even the negative terms we use toward each other. <clears throat> these are words, these are, there, there's no, in word in African languages, that's not. This is English language. This is something they learn. What the white man called them, they call each other. You understand? Not something. You know, Spanish Negro mean black, uh, and, and another language Negro mean black. But at the same time, where did the uh, N I G E R come from? Uh, you know, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, and the MF and all of that. These are all languages that we learn here. And learning to, uh, even there are many black people that don't like Muslims. They don't like the nation of Islam and they don't like uh, 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 Prophet Muhammad who said that he, I mean, I'm not, now let me just show you how, how deep this is. Prophet Muhammad 1500 years ago said that God talked to him and revealed to him the religion of, of the revelations. And that's why he started Islam. Elijah Muhammad said God talked to him under the auspices of Master Farad Muhammad, who was a white man, and came and talked to him. And that's how he started the nation of Islam. Why didn't God just talk to everybody? You know, why did he just pick them two? See, and, and the same thing with Abraham, the same thing with Moses, the same thing with uh, Noah. You know, I mean, do it make sense that it rained all over the world for 40 days and 40 nights? 
I mean, I mean, you know, you, 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 I mean, I'm not saying, hey, look, don't go to church, don't pay your, pay your tithes, and don't believe in a life that there's a life after death. But I'm talking about the dynamics of the Holy Bible, the Holy Quran. The, uh, the, these are all creations and translations from Arabic to English and from Hebrew to English. So you, you have to look at those things from that, that standpoint. And then here's, a, here's a, two sisters in Congress getting death threats because they're Muslim and things of this nature. I mean, they're, 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 that's a dynamic that uh, 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 we uh, uh, thank you for that, Rasha Keith. You know, and we're going to have to come to terms with spirituality. I mean, I have no problem with people accepting that there's some type of of a creator, or you know, it may be mod or whatever. And I'm, I have no problem with people uh, 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 that want to believe in those things. But at the same time, you, sometimes you got to admit, well, hey, it's beyond your capacity to conceive or realize where life came, where it started, what the who created the universe. First, they thought that God only created Earth. Then they found out that there are billions of Earths and planets all over. And then they said, well, he created the universe, the heavens and the, you know, that's all the part of the heavens and everything that creeped up on the earth. And people, you got Michael's uh, uh, guy on channel seven talking about he's going up in space. You're already in space. There's nothing up under the earth. The earth is in orbit also. So you just go on. Um, well, anyway, that's a whole new different argument. <laughs> Rashi, you have anything you want to add? I just had yes. really a question for you. Uh, how do you how do you um, kind of like if somebody asks you how uh, uh, do you believe in God? Then they say, do you believe that God created? all things how do you how do you approach that right well it's, it's different things you know first of all you, you when person asks you that they they generally are trying to see if you're religious or uh, or uh, uh, not you know and they're different between a, a philosophy and religion a organized religion you understand now i answered uniquely you know i say yeah i believe there's a creator i believe that there's some ultimate force that created life and create uh, uh, that is responsible for life i don't know if it created or if it was just an offset as of of a comet or, or this earth is a break off of a of, of of another planet and got caught up in the solar system and started orbiting around the sun you know, uh, uh, and 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 then uh, with the water, life sprung from it. And if you read John G. Jackson's book, that's what he talked about. Life begins in the water, and came out, uh, uh, and 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 began. Now, that, that's what I believe in, and I practice. You know, uh, uh, appreciation and respect for all life. And uh, you know, but as far as uh, believing that. Uh, there's a life after death. I don't know. I don't know if it is. Uh, and when you say you don't know, don't mean you don't believe or you don't accept that there might be, but you just don't know. Now, do I go to organized churches and organized religions? No, I, I speak at them. I participate in them. I, you know, I participate in churches all the time, every Sunday. I pray with other people. I do different things because that's where they at. And uh, and and you know, and I, I'm not being hypocritical. I mean, they ask me to join in with them. I do that. The, the relationships are very important. I have no problem working with them, but they have a problem working with me because most religions are secret societies. In other words, you can't be a Christian unless you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And that you practice and pay your pay your uh, <coughs> uh, your your uh, tithes and come to church. That's a part of being a a, 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 a Christian. Right? Well, there are many people that practice a Christian doctrine that don't go to church. 
they treat each other. They they help the vulnerable. They they do what they they they're ethical. They don't steal. They don't lie. They don't cheat. Uh, they don't do things. And but they don't go to church. And they sometimes are more more practicing the doctrine of Christianity than the Christians practicing it themselves. And that's what Joe was uh, uh, was talking about. Look at all the wars. Look at the imposition. Even the first. Uh, many of the first blacks that came here in the Holocaust of enslavement were Muslims. Even in the dynamic roots, uh, the uh, mini series roots, Kunta Kente, there were Asalaamu Alaikum. You understand? Uh, they, they were Muslims. And, and, and uh, uh, according to history and according to anthropology. But those Muslims were black. They weren't the European Muslims. You understand? who claim to be Muslim, claim to be Jewish, when the first organized spiritual centers were made by black people, the first church, the Coptic church in Ethiopia, according to Dr. Yosef ben Yakana, And the first uh, Jews were black. The first, <coughs> first uh, uh, Christians was black. And, uh, but uh, when the European came, he corrupted it and turned it into, you either forced into conversion, I see you as a convert, or a consumer, or utilitarian. If I can't convert you, can't sell you something, or can't use you, get out of my way. You understand? And that's what you find. They're cliques, they're gangs. Many of them are gangs, they were gangs. How do you call yourself Quakers, and um, pilgrims and escaping religion oppression and come here and wipe out all the Indians and enslave black people for 400 years and then talking about, thank you, God. And that's what Malcolm used to say. How do you, how do you reconcile the man, you're praying God to get you out of this bad situation with a rope around your neck. And here's some other person praying to God to hope the rope don't break so that you can hang. Y'all praying to the same God. There's something wrong with that. That's my point. You understand? And why, why God only talk to certain people? You understand? Why if you know those are those are their God, you know, only talk to them. Then I mean, um, there were 16 saviors besides Jesus, the Dr. G. Jackson, and he tells you where they were, who they were. Now he was atheistic. I'm not atheistic. I'm, you know, I'm spiritual. I believe in the spiritual of humanity and the spiritual of life uh, uh, and the mechanisms of life. It's complex, but I'm I'm personal enough to say I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's uh, what's real or not. But here are people saying, "Oh, I talk to God," and God, yeah. Now look, don't think me wrong. I didn't have some revelations. I got some bad situations, and I give faith and spirit to the ancestors that. And 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 some uh, uh, a revelational spirituality situation that I believe caused me not to go uh, get in a lot of trouble, or, or death, or, or things of this nature. But at the same time, I'm not going to accept something people create or make up. And just because you get a bunch of people to believe in it, don't that makes it real to them? But that don't I don't have to follow that. So, you know, it's a complex answer that I give when I'm asked that. But, but you know, at the same time, it's, a, it's one of being as honest as you can, you know. Um, um, all, all, all religions were created. Every, every ideology. Ideology becomes a philosophy, then becomes a reality as people build institutions to support it. If it wasn't for churches and it wasn't for biblical text and it wasn't for things that people created to substantiate as far as they're concerned, the existence of, of their belief, people wouldn't believe it. I mean, you know, as soon as you're a kid, they take you and christen you, throw water on you, tell them about, you know, serve you up. And, 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 you know, most people were taken to church by their friends or invited to church by their friends. Uh, as young kids, your mother and father took you to church. Then as you get older, you drop off because you see things different. But anyway, I don't know if that answers your question. Oh, yeah, it did. 
Okay. Mashin, do you have any comment? No, I'm just listening tonight. You know, thank you for your <laughs> presentation, man. I got I got um, two of my best friends are Muslim. Uh, mm -hmm. They're with the Nation of Islam. One's a female, one's a male. I've been knowing them for 40 years. And, uh, you know, they're good people. And, uh, you know, one of them, the male, he tells me I'm more of a Muslim than he is. And, you know, and, and what he means by that is sometimes, you know, how I eat or what I say or what I do, you know, some of the practices that uh, that they believe in, you know, I, I, I uh, carry it out naturally, you know. So I think uh, a lot of the principles <coughs> in, out of the uh, religion and things like that, you know, there's some commonality in all of them. I respect that. You know, you know, if if you showing love, I'm with you. If you showing hate, I'm not. And that's just the bottom line. So I don't I think there's a mystery to all of it. You know, I think, you know, all of us on this call have only been on the planet for a few minutes compared to mm -hmm. history. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so I'd be a fool to try to, uh, you know, denounce or whatever. You know, I'm still learning. You know, I do have my opinions about things uh but tonight i'm just going to kind of just listen but i appreciate your commentary and mm. uh you know and uh have a good evening yeah but what, what, what do you think about this phobia uh towards I, muslims by america by by many people in america that they believe that they're subject to terrorism that they um don't deserve to be in the government that they are uh, anti-American because America's at war with other countries. How, how do you see that, Lucinda? Uh, well, I see it, you know, just like the uh, basic racism that you deal with in, in America every day. Uh, there's a movie, I think it's on BET. It's called Karen, you know, K-A-R-E-N. There's a crazy white woman named Karen. Black folks <laughs> move to Black folks mm -hmm. moving to the white neighborhood. And uh, so, of course, she's on the homeowners association. And basically, you know, she's in the spread and the propaganda about, oh, our neighborhood is about to change. And, you know, so, you know, it's just it's, 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 it's what she's been taught, you know, from a from a child. So she perpetuates hate in black people. You know, so in other words, it's the same thing. You got people throughout history have uh you know, perpetuated hate toward other people because, uh, you know, you come from a different island or a, a different, you know, you come from another uh, state or another country or, you know, what you believe in. You know, a lot, you know, it's kind of like, it ain't your fault that you was born where you were born. You're born where you're born. And you, you, you know, everybody, you know, you know, you assimilate until you learn. And then once you start learning, you know, sometimes, you know, they say ignorance is bliss. You know, sometimes you're better off not knowing, you know, going down that rabbit hole, you might become a frustrated human being and, and become so rebellious that you get yourself taken out, you know. Uh, you know, so at the same time, you know, I just look at it. I just look for the common denominator, which is love, you know, in all of them. And as far as, you know, the historical aspect of it, you know, uh, you know, of course, there's some truth to that. You know, there's a lot of people were selling slaves, a lot of people were involved in making money, you know, in, in hustling and stuff like that. And we as a people, of course, globally and, you know, have, have been mistreated. And, and of course, we, you know, you guys spoke on that many, many times during these uh, podcasts. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, again, my spirit tells me, you know, what I feel and uh, you know, and I'm a spiritual person myself. Are you right back um, there? <clears throat> I'm a, you know, I I, I believe that, that that you know there is a a prime mover involved. You know, you know, there's, a, you know, it's 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 it's, it's too. Uh, well, anyway, the bottom line is, you know, as far as the hate and you know the phobia, that's just you know that's like I say, that's they they're taught that. You know, if you're a kid growing up in a family that's being taught to hate. You know, and then it's been perpetuated for so long. Why they do it? You know, it's you know white supremacy. You know, it's you, you know European supremacy. You know, want to be in charge. You know, rewrite the history. We did it first. The Greeks didn't do it. This one did it. Whoever did it. You know, whatever. You know, at the end of the day, 
you know, of course, it's a power move, you know, and it's and it's a lot of economics tied to it, you know, used to enslave people, you know. There's a, a philosopher, what's his, his name? What Frederick Nietzsche? They said he was kind of thrown off, but he was smart at the same time, you know. European philosopher, he said they use these religions to, uh, you know, far as uh, to keep people subordinate, you know, kind of like what we're talking about, you know, they, they use it, you know, as a weapon. So again, anything can be weaponized against people, you know, we can weaponize it, we can monetize, we can do all kinds of thing in, 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 you know, just in, you know, to benefit from that, you know. But at the end of the day, after the smoke clears, I, like I say, the, the bottom line is, you know, I think anybody on the planet that is showing love, I remember those Harry Krishnas, you get off the plane, I get off the plane and they go Harry Krishna in the airport and he walks up to me and gives me a book and say, I love you, brother, and this and that. I say, I love you too. You know, hey, have a nice day. You know, I'm not going to sit down and have a long conversation, but, you know, now whatever his, his agenda is, if he's trying to recruit me or whatever. You know, no, it wasn't, you know, that's not what, you know, what I was about. But what I'm saying is, is it's it's uh, people all over the world that spread hate, you know, for their uh, own gain and own benefit and, uh, you know, to suppress others and that type of thing. So it's, it, you know, people, uh, you got haters, like you say, collaborators and haters secret haters and, and, and collaborators and, and things like that. And, and it's an agenda. A lot of them don't even know the agenda that they're carrying out. They just uh, kind of like somebody that's in the war. They sign up for the military and they got to go over there and shoot up a brother. You know, Muhammad Ali said, I wouldn't go, you know, he, Muhammad Ali was a Muslim, but he wasn't going over to Vietnam to shoot no brothers over there. He said, man, they didn't do nothing to me, you know? So he didn't buy into it, you know? And uh, that's the thing, you know, if you don't, you can't buy into that foolishness. And, uh, you know, but it's, 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 it's um, the more people go along with a certain ideology, you know, the people that are behind the ideology, you know, they become more powerful, you know, so Jim Jones tried to pull something off. And, uh, you know, of course, that was short lived, you know, but a lot of people got took out, you know, so keep your eyes open, keep your ears open. And, uh, you know, but again, I appreciate the commentary or in the, in the history, uh, because, you know, it just reminds me that I got to keep my eyes open. And, uh, at the same time, you know, I'm gonna continue to show love and, and to try to avoid, you know, all the haters out there. And, uh, but, you know, phobia is fear, you know, people are in fear. It's like getting on the elevator, you know, white woman, black man get on the elevator. They've been taught that, hey, this nigga might rob me. You know, it's in their mind, psychological damage, you know, subliminal seduction. And they, and they spread that, you know, or they're moving to our neighborhood. You know, we can't allow this. They're going to play with our children, you know, this, that and the other, you know. So it's the same old thing, you know. And if you're not practicing the same religion that they're practicing, you know, they, that's the same thing. Oh they're not this, they're that, you know, so they're one of those, you know, that kind of thing. So yeah, it's, it's, it's just people are conditioned and don't even know why they, you know, what it's all about. They just follow, they, they, they sheep, you know, people are sheep, you know, a lot of people are. And um, so that's my comments for tonight. Thank you very much. Well, let me, let me just say this to you, bro. you know, you make some, a lot of good points and I really appreciate that much. You're bringing up some issues, but you, we got to remember that to some people, their religion saved them. To some people, spirituality is important. It gives them their morals, their ethics, their values. There are other people that have abused religion. You know, there's nothing wrong with people getting together to worship and 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 to practice if they practice the doctrine the way it is taught, you know, like you mentioned love. That's what both have been what Jesus taught, you know. And he came with the good news uh, because the Jews was teaching an eye for an eye and a whole new different doctrine, fighting with God. God had to give him a name, Israel, you know, all of that. And that the Israel today is not the Israel, biblical Israel. This is something that the Europeans then created by coming and saying that they are Jews, you know, like they come here and say they're American. When the Native American, when you say here come an American, you don't think a Native American gonna pop up. You think a white man gonna pop up. 
And so there is a, and, and they supplant the land and, and then they impose their greed and their capitalistic and uh, a vicious uh, imposition on people. So, but there are certain people that religion saved their lives. Their religion uh, got them off drugs. Their religion kept their marriage together. Their religion uh, kept their uh, families together. Their religion kept them working and kept them being faithful to their spouses and, and things of this nature. So you can't say all dynamics of spirituality is bad because people abused it and misused it. I mean, uh, uh, the, the doctrine of America, many people say it's a good doctrine, but at the same time, they don't practice it. They don't say, they say all people created equal, well, except for, you know, and that's what you were bringing up, Dr. Uh, I mean, uh, Machinda, the, the contradiction. You, you know, you, you've got to look at, uh, 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 reconcile that people have revelations. They, they pray for things and things happen uh, and, they, and they think their prayers were answered. And how, how are you gonna tell them it wasn't? You know, if, if they say they prayed to get rid of the cancer and they went back to the doctor and the cancer was gone, what you gonna say, that didn't happen? When it was diagnosed or they prayed, somebody was on a respirator and they woke up. Uh, and you know, you, you know that people say, I thank God, I thank God, I thank God. Well, I mean, you let them roll, you know, but but it but did God tell you to enslave people for 400 years? Did God tell you to kill all the Native Americans? Did God tell you to bomb the Iraq citizens, uh, the Afghanistan citizens to impose to impose your democratic, uh, Hippocratic of, of, of philosophy on it, you know, of, for minerals, for resources. Did God tell them to lock black people up for penitentiaries and, and, and what they did to Emmett Till and what they did to all the other Martin Luther King and all of them. And, and you know, so those are, those are dynamics that we have to look at the people that have abused religion and rebuke, uh, this is like a man who say he loves his wife, then beat her. What kind of love is that? You understand? You know, um, but uh, a, a man that say he loves his family, but commit incest with his daughter, or, 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 or incest with his son, or, or the mother that goes to bed with the son. I mean, uh, on their own, because they can't control their human sexual desire. Uh, so uh, that don't mean families are bad because some people abuse their families or misuse them. You know, some families are great. They have reunions. They, they work together. They love each other. They look after each other. Some don't even talk to each other. So that don't mean all families are bad. The family institution is bad, you know, the concept. But getting back to this phobia situation, it's um, when you look at the Sister Rashida Talib, who's out of Detroit and um, uh, uh, Iman, uh, 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 these are sisters being attacked, again, death threats and being accused of being anti-American and, and, and because they're Muslims. You understand now, they're not the, the Muslims that's going around trying to do anything. They, they're asking America about the Palestinians. They're asking America about uh, why are you giving all this money to Israel, why they're starving and won't let uh, uh, discriminating, creating inhumane acts against the Palestinians for over 40, uh, six, six, close to 60 years. You know, uh, I mean, the, these are doctrines that and America don't want to answer those questions. So what do they do? They demonize these women. You know what I'm saying? They demonize Muslims that raise those issues. You know? And so, yes, Arashi, do you have any comments? What about you, good doctor? No, no, just, just taking it in, man, listening mm -hmm. to uh, okay. what you're saying. And uh, yeah, you know, one point is very interesting, man. You know, when you first started, you talked about the 9 11, a couple other things, and just mentioned the smashing grabs, but you know, um, I don't know if any of those kids were Muslims, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's just like saying, you know, that the guy that was in Vegas and shot up all those people. I don't know if he was Muslim, 
You know, I don't know this kid that just shot four kids in the other school the other day. I don't know if he was Muslim. You know, you had an incident in Ventura where someone shot a place. I don't know if they were Muslim. You know, you got all these incidents over the world, things happening. And it's like you say, you want to point to the few that just happened with a Muslim, but look at all these other incidents happening with these other people. You know, that is more terrifying, you know. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm terrified, man. I go to I go to Walmart or Costco or Sam's Club, man. I'm 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 looking at white people. I'm more afraid of them when I'm going to the store. See if anybody's gonna white person put out a gun, man. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. I'm not aware of the Muslims at those stores, man. I'm more aware about the whites around, man. See who's gonna try to frame me, say I did something, I didn't do something, or pull out a gun and start shooting everybody. You know, uh just like the incident the other day, uh, what, a few weeks ago, it, it was a brother driving through a crowd. You know, when the incident went down, they said somebody was driving through a crowd. First, I thought it was a white person driving through a crowd, hitting people again. It turned out, this one turned out to be black, but, you know, the tide is turning, man. Every time I turn around, uh, like like when you just heard about the, sh the school shooting the other day, I knew it had to be a white kid. You know, uh, before I even announced it, it said four old kids shot up four people and some teachers said, oh, it got to be white. You know, but, you know, we don't, you know, he, and hopefully he gets some help because he needs help. And nothing's wrong with it. He, he just little pressures and hopefully he gets off, you know, they go to psych or don't go to prison, you know. Uh, but, you know, incidents are happening, man. And, you know, you, you want to pinpoint just a few people because they race, unfortunately, but it happens. It happens. Good. What about you, Joe? Any more comments? Brother Hembrick? Uh Trying to think of some, uh, you know, uh, no, nah, I don't have any more comments. Uh, I know what America suffers from, and anybody that's different than them, uh, you know, and 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 the reason it's so intensified now because there's a fear of the European being outnumbered in America, not just uh, with the, with the you know, with the Muslim phobia, any kind of immigrant phobia. Any, well, I won't say immigrant, but any non-white, that's what they fear, is they fear losing, you know, you know, losing control and losing, uh, you know, power of the situation. And in and, and neighborhoods, cities, states, you know, I know Georgia is probably going through that right now. Uh, you know what happened down there in the recent election. So they're trying to they're trying to maintain power, and you know uh, they're doing it by any means necessary. Uh, you know, Trump. That's why Trump was so was so you know influential in his little term in office, and had Europeans doing stuff that I never thought. I see them do out in the open like they are, but I know that's what they've been thinking all along, but Trump allowed it to just come on out the closet and just say it and do it, you know? Uh, mm. So, uh, you know, that's just how he is. Uh, I guess when you grow up in them caves and them ice ages, that's the type of mentality that you come out with because you didn't have nothing while you were there. You know, hard to eat, hard to stay warm, hard for clothing, you know, all of that. So, like Brother Clark says, uh, they always wanted things other people had, thought they couldn't do without, and they don't want to pay for it. They just take it. And uh, that's still the mentality. But just commenting on the Israeli thing and why, you know, the United States backs them so much. If you look at this country in America, who controls a lot of these institutions are these European so-called Jews, the Hebrews, you know, they run up the show. And transportation, law, you name all institutions, they pretty much control it. So if the American politician, like, for instance, like Tom Bradley, Tom Bradley was the mayor of LA for how many years? The only way he could do that was, was with the Jewish support because blacks in LA have never been more than 17% of the population. So, you know, I like to say politics makes for strange bedfellows. And uh, and just on the other end, 
You see what happened with a uh, 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 with a Senio Hall having the best talk show in America, and you bring Minister uh, 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 Farrakhan on the show, and now you can't even get a commercial. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, those are the folks that run on the show. You see, they made Jesse and others apologize. Uh, and they're just running the show. So that's the reason they get all the money uh, for Israel uh, and those Palestinians. You know, I used to tell my students, you know, you guys are not hearing the whole story about what's going on over there. I said, first of all, uh, you know, people come in and take 50, what if some people took 55% of your house and gave you the garage and the backyard and they had the living room, kitchen and all that. I said, you'd be throwing rocks at tanks too. And virtually that's what's going on. And they and they keep taking and taking more, you know. Uh, and actually that was the first, the first, uh, the first terror, so-called terrorist act that occurred after, I think it was 1948, they, all of the, Jews that they got out of Europe, they had them on a boat trying to find a homeland for them. And uh, what's the name of knocking bacon? The guy with a patch over his eye. He uh, he got tired of going around and blew up the boat. So they couldn't go nowhere else but where they were, which is present day Israel. So, uh, and ever since then, they keep taking more and more land and the military stuff is supported by the United States. So. You know, uh, I remember I had a class with a guy when I was getting my teacher credential. He was from Jordan, <clears throat> and uh, he was he was talking about how the press is so twisted about what's going on over there. Uh, like America is supposedly going to be, uh, you know, targeting uh, 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 a strategic places militarily. He said that's the biggest lie in the world. They bomb hospitals, schools, and all that stuff but it never reaches the American press, you know, but anytime they do something, then it's all blown out of proportion. So, you know, uh, and we know who controls the mass media, which is them. So I used to tell, tell my students at the end of any show, news, movie, whatever, you look at the credits and look at the names of the people are credited with putting on the show. And most of them are of Jewish background, you know, because they run the show the shipyard, they run transportation, they run banking. You know, they're running the show. It's called The Hidden Hand. It's a book called The Hidden Hand. Uh, and, and, and the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, that's the book. They say wherever they go in the world, that's their plan to control those institutions. So that's why they're as powerful as they are. And they're a very small percentage of the world's population, but they got most of the paper. Anyway, that's all I'm going to say tonight. Uh, thanks for everybody tuning in and hope everybody got something out of uh, the presentation tonight. Yeah. Okay. And Professor Ra. Yes. Uh, Brother Machinda had his hand raised. Go ahead. Yeah, I just I had some technical difficulties. My battery is kind of messed up on my phone, but I just wanted to, while you was talking, my phone went dead. So I just wanted to chime back in and uh, make a clarification, though. Um, you know, again, what I was talking about as well, as far as uh, sheep goes, you know, I was speaking of, you know, again, I, I married a Christian, you know, wouldn't trade her for the world, you know. Uh, I, I agree with you 100%, what, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, what religion may, or Christianity, or, you know, Islam may do for people, you know, you take Malcolm X was in jail, it straightened his mind out, you know, as far as at least brought him to the center point to where, you know, he quit doing a lot of foolishness in them streets. And, um, and then he decided, you know, and then he pursued it. And uh, he felt committed because of the fact that, you know, it, it freed him and he believed in it. Well, of course, he had some qualms with, you know, Elijah Muhammad, you know, due to some things and uh, that he disagreed with, I assume. And then he got chastised and put kicked to the side for a minute, you know, put on silenced and things like that. But uh, but outside of all that, you know, you're absolutely, I agree with that 100%. 
and uh and and you know i take my wife in particular you know i would never uh you know blasted her about anything i can't argue with her about religion i mean it's you know that's something personal to her and at the same time i was brought up in religion myself you know which you know in terms of my own family you know uh introducing me to Catholicism, you know, we got, I got a New Orleanian background, you know, so of course, a lot of brothers and sisters out of New Orleans, they come out Catholic, you know, I was going to catechism when I was a, you know, a young kid, you know, five, six, seven years old. And, uh, and then of course, we broke away from that. And we explored other religions. My mother had us going to the kingdom hall, we weren't Jehovah Witness, but friends of hers were, and I tell you what, we went to the conventions and all of that. And hey, it, I got some, you know, when I reflect back, it was some of the positive things that I was introduced to. Now, as far as, you know, the dogma or the, the, the you know, the, the actual doctrine and things like that, I'm still researching those things. You know, it's, it's a lifelong thing for me, but I, like I say, you know, I guess, you know, a lot of, I think, Christians and even us, Islam, you know, I guess they, you know, the word blasphemous, you know, when you denounce and all that. No, I'm not, I'm not, you know, it probably was a time in my life when, you know, I was a little harsh about my opinion. But, you know, that's what I meant by, you know what, um, I don't think I have the total answer. Uh, and I do know that it has helped people. Uh, and, and I tell you what, um, I know plenty of people who are, who are good people in their heart. They help people and all that. You know, they're on next level type, you know, people that are very respected. And uh, so I have no problem with that. Even the church that she goes to, I actually joined, but I don't go all the time, but I enjoy the fellowship. I think you mentioned that how you might go because this is where they're at. You know, these are people, you know, now as educators, as as advisors, as uh, students, as whatever you want to call us, what we you know, in other words, you know, creating a provoking thought and discussion about, you know, hey, maybe they can teach me, you know, like Brother Thomas may come on and want to share some of, you know, his experiences and things like that. I got a lot of respect for that brother, you know, not only, uh, you know, a lot of the things he shared personally, but just in general. And like I say, I have friends of mine who, you know, who I respect wholeheartedly. And uh, we don't have that uh, 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 problem about, you know, they're not trying to recruit me. You know, they know I'm on, I got my, both of my feet are on the ground and I'm not rejecting them as like I'm hating on them. So yeah, don't get me wrong. I have much respect. You talk about Minister Farcon, people say, oh, well, he's this, he's that. I, he's one. Of, he's one of the most uh, prolific uh, speakers. On I, I listened to a lecture from him. I forget it was back in the '90s. Man, he broke down some African history, and he 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 summed he summed it up so perfectly to my understanding. Gave me a good viewpoint, and I had to respect that. You know, they say it's consider the message, not the messenger. I, although I'm not being critical on him because I'm not his judge. But uh, at the same time, you know, you live and you learn, like as my mother used to say, you live and you learn and I'm still learning. But uh, so I just wanted to clarify that it was, you know, it, it, the sheep are the ignorant people who jump on board with something and spread hate as, a, as these perpetrators that we were talking about. And they're carrying out these deadly deeds and duties of, that they think that they have to do. I work around them all day long. You know, I'm down here in the South right now. I work around a lot of rednecks. You want to meet some rednecks? Come holler at me. I, it, but you know what? I get along with most of them because I'm not down there debating, you know, you know, the Klan and all that. Although I get into some deep discussions about race with some of them. And uh, I don't be going to their houses or none of that because I choose not to. I don't, I'm not with them like that. But the ones, you know, I have a, a way of communicating with some of those folks, not to try to change them, but to let them know, because see, they're down there dealing with our young brothers and sisters in these school systems and stuff. So they want to stereotype and all these kind of things. So I have to go and rework their thinking in terms of, hey, while they're in our custody, while we're charged with teaching them, you got to learn to look at it. You got to start looking at things a little differently, you know, but I, you know, but it's, it's, a, it's a work in progress. And uh, I've, I've gotten, a, I've 
I've uh, made a lot of ground, you know, in, in, in that arena, you know. So, again, the sheep are the people who just go along with ideologies and even know what the hell it is all about. And they just, it, they're brainwashed and they're conditioned. You know, like you say, the, the people that went to the White House or to the Capitol or didn't want to carry out, Trump is, you know, is like a puppeteer. He's, he knows that people are very vulnerable and uh, especially a lot of the white folks because, you know, it is the last, like I call it the last call for alcohol. You know, it's like this, their last hoorah. I worked in the, I worked in the gay, I worked with gangs and I was privy to hear some conversation where, a lot of people couldn't hear it. I had phone numbers to Klan and all that kind of Klan organizations and things like that, where I can make a phone call, listen to recordings, where uh, Tom Mesker, the Grand Dragon of the Ku Klux, or the Imperial Wizard, San Diego Ku Klux Klan, his first message was, you know, he realized he was letting the people know on a recording that they're at they're at basically zero percent birth rate. You know, they're hanging on. This is their last call, you know, so it's like, hey, they're and if you, uh, the rednecks that I talk about, it's all about their way of life. They want their guns and they're, they're this, their freedoms and things aren't the same anymore. You know, we, John Wayne is dead, you know, whatever, you know, so it's happening right before their eyes, you know, and unfortunately, you know, I'm not saying good or bad. It's just it, it's, 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 it's a transition going on. It's an evolution going on. It's a change going on. And it, it's the changing of the guard. And that's the way it is. Now, is that the way God intended? That's that, that's up to you if you want to believe that. It just it is what it is. The population is changing, and it will come with with uh, what comes with changing population is a change in perspectives and a change in, in new ideas and things like that. Nobody say, hey, when we get in power, we're gonna kill all of y'all. Some of them might think that's what's gonna happen, you know, that kind of thing. So I know how some of these folks think, you know. And then you got some ignorant black folks that 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 are like say collaborators and, and, and secret haters that go along with it, compromising their their integrity and whatever, just to let them, you know, to so they can exist a little longer on the planet, you know. So uh anyway, I just wanted to clarify that the 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 sheep are the ones who are involved with something and they don't have a concrete reason why they're with it other than they've been told something and they and, and really and they just carry it out especially and they catch these young white boys especially oh man they just it it, it, it but one thing about it a lot of them I debate with them in a certain way and, and try to get them to see other angles and they might say man that makes sense you know but again it's it's you know Last call for alcohol. Have a good night. <laughs> All right, brother. That was that was deep, brother. Because see, you got to remember, Kareem Jabbar, Muslim. Um, as you said, Muhammad Ali, Malcolm X, uh, Abdul Rahman, Walt Hazard converted to Islam. So you know you you have those those those, those dynamics. But the point is, is that you know we. We, 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 as you said, you know, there, there are certain aspects of, um, of, of, of spirituality that helps a lot of people. They build hospitals, they um, uh, do philanthropic work, uh, they uh, pray for people, people get married, and they haven't even been to church, but they get married in the church. Yeah, uh, and these gang, gang members get married and uh, get buried in church. You know, the parents, you know, because the parents were spiritual. I mean, you know, and uh, that, that, those, are, those are services that people appreciate. But the point is, is that uh, this hatred toward Muslims is serious uh, because, it, first of all, like, you know, America uh, demonized, just like they uh, created a phobia against us, they're creating a phobia against that. But the point is, is you know, uh, we have to respect uh, human life uh, uh, and, and, and various ways in which people um, uh, see life and see the world because I, you know, I, I can't convince people to see the world the way I see it. You know, um, um, you know I mean, I, I, and I wouldn't try to. I'll just express how I see the world and it's up to them if they can get anything out of it. But I'm not trying to convert them or make them believe in that, but that's how messiahs are built. They they get they get. Uh, that's what deacon's job is to say that the preacher is doing a good job, and amen, and, and standing up, and yes, sir, and all of that. 
you know that's that 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 that's all a part of the the the, the show, as you said, uh, Machinda. You know, it's 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 a it's a big uh, you know the, uh, the the theatrics in church draw people, the choirs draw people. People go to church for different reasons. You know, some some just uh, you know, hey, look, uh, my mama went, so I'll go. You know, uh, and uh, it, it's a dynamic uh, that we have to look at. But this hatred and this fear. The same process they use to turn people against uh, uh, us, and we have done nothing to them, nothing on a level in which they just blanketly uh, uh, foster hatred toward us and, uh, and, 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 and build organizations and put up big money, big money. And it's not the individuals. It's not Trump. It's his followers. You understand uh, the hidden followers that support him and don't come out publicly and say I support him, but send him money and 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 vote the way he say vote. You know you uh, 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 you know you have to recognize, as Joe was pointing out, control of institutions. Yeah, you know, see the, the the guy I see as as we get ready to conclude. If you're not Christian, you're a Gentile, meaning that you're just in general. That's what Gentile means. And if you're not uh, 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 what they call uh, the chosen people, they're white people, but they're saying that we are chosen by God and that uh, God chose us to rule. And they so they pursue institutions. Now, we as Black people, we're just trying to pursue life, just enjoy life. And, uh, you, know, we, we, you know, we want the institutions, but we want the institutions to be without discrimination, without hatred, and without the power to demonize other human beings for no reason other than to exploit, to uh, uh, deprivate, uh, uh, deprive, and 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 destroy. And so those are the dynamics. But anyway, I want to thank everybody for uh, coming in. And let the good doctor have something else to say, or Joe, or or, or Rashi Key. I just uh, like to, go I just, ahead. I just like to clarify a point when you were talking about the Gentile. Now, according to the book, there's Jews. And everybody else is a Gentile, whether you're Christian or not. I just wanted to clarify that. That's according to the book, what the book says. Uh, you know, uh, there, there's, there's not just Christians and everybody else is Gentiles, but it was the Jews and then everyone else is a Gentile. Mm. So uh, through Jesus, they was allowed to get in, but they still Gentiles, whether they're Christians anyway. All right, just wanted to make that. <laughs> well, it, it, I think we're saying the same thing, <laughs> but, you know. But you know, because one thing the 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 institutions of Christianity and the institution of Islam and the institutions of Christianity, one thing all of them got in common: they white, and they all practice racism, and they all uh, practice abuse. Uh, so uh, you know they can they can they can come up with all the name calling they want, but it all supports what what you suggest was white supremacy. Yeah, that's that's their that's their thing. They only want to be in the religion if we in. Right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, go ahead, Rashi T. Uh, <laughs> you announced for Wednesday. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent show, you guys. Everybody did an excellent job. Keep up the good work. I'm loving it. I'm learning a lot. Okay. On uh on Wednesday, everybody, we got Peter Rogers coming back. And it's a, a parent's perspective on public education. So I, I'm pretty sure all of us can really chime in on that as an educator and a parent. So mm -hmm. right. All right. All right. All right. Anything for next week? Professor Rock. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna try, I'm trying to get um and I'll let you know probably by uh uh 
tomorrow, uh, 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 no later than Thursday, uh, we're going to focus on Kwanzaa, maybe a Kwanzaa workshop. A lot of people don't know the first thing about Kwanzaa, and it's coming up, and we want to do a, a workshop on that. Okay. Good, good. Excellent. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody. Each one, teach right. one in Conscious Corner. All right, then, brother. Thanks again, Rashiki. Thank you. All right.